Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is SideQuest Nemesis by Board and Dice in association with Lock Me and with Awaken Realms. This is an escape room style adventure in the world of the Nemesis series. The Nemesis board game is a really popular game by Awaken Realms. Uh, this has been taken to a small box game and it incorporates the use of a deck of cards and a number of different tools that you're going to be using in this story. You're going to be playing as a captain and she is going to be attempting to go and see what's going on with her friend. She takes the mission, goes out to see what's going on and finds a derelict spaceship with unknown entities inside and she's going to be moving through the spaceship and accomplishing her goals. This all takes place within a deck of cards here that you're going to be going from one to the next, solving puzzles and clues, utilizing maybe even riddles and key codes. You're going to be going to go ahead and going through with all these different little things that are in the game. Now all in, in convention is a small box game. Like this if I showed you how small it is, maybe at the end of the video I will, but uh, it becomes quite a rather large game for the size of the box. And we'll talk about how to set the game up, or very little about a setup, but there is some setup, and then how to play, and then of course we'll talk about what do I think about side quests, the series, or side quest nemesis for uh, more specific. <laughs> so with the help of editing magic and um, my interest in making sure the runtime is 10 minutes, because you know I gotta get all this ad revenue dollars, I pulled out actually this one here, 7th C side quest. Another one I'll be trying later, probably on, on the live stream, which I did with this one in our previous live stream, which you can go ahead and check out in the link below. Um, this is the size of the box, it's actually quite small. It's a small box game. This is the same style of game, but this one here is uh, Board and Dice with 7th C, another game designed by Lock Me. Um, and so they're kind of small little box games. And basically what happens is you open the game up and then you're going to get uh, greeted with a deck of cards, which you'll open up and it's gonna have a welcome and on the back a stop. Make sure that it's always set in your hand just like this so that you have your welcome just so that you can see it. And then you're just gonna simply read the card. You'll take it and it's always gonna have numbers on the top right hand corner to indicate where you are in the game. So you're gonna start with one, you'll read it, you'll look at the little arrow on the bottom right and you'll flip it and you'll read that. And you'll just keep going and there's an entire setup in the first four cards that explain that you're going to be getting a small deck of room tiles that you'll set up to create the base of operations. And you're gonna get a standee character, your captain you're working with, an infection deck, an event deck, and your status deck, along with a little status token which supports your life support, which basically you're trying to get to four. You're also gonna be greeted with a number of different punch boards Boards, which you can leave unpunched, um, uh, except you'll be taking out these key codes. These codes will determine if you've got something right in the game as you move through with the puzzles. Uh, it'll eventually tell you to place your character down on the starting room of the space, and from there the game is basically going to begin. You are going to, on your turn, take your character, move to a space, flip that space over, and do what it says. Literally everything here is do what it says. In reading the card, well, like in magic terms, explains the card. You'll start by flipping over the starting room. It's the bridge. The bridge will tell you that you enter it directly and the corporation wants the payload brought to Earth, so it's time to set the coordinates. So you're going to set the coordinates to Earth. And you'll look and you'll see that you need to take card one. When it tells you to take a card number, you'll look on the top left-hand side. Top right is to indicate where it needs to go in the deck. The top left-hand side is to it can indicate that it is the card number for the game. And you'll read it. The system uses legacy coordinates. Make sure you get the code for Earth correct. And you'll flip it over, and now you have a puzzle. And this puzzle will say something like, input the coordinates to Earth. And you'll have to utilize the puzzle on the card to determine how to solve it. Last thing to talk about is when you try to solve. Well, these little key codes have three things on them. One is a number, now this one here is seven. One is a symbol, looks kind of like a P, and then the color, which is pink. And you're going to have always four of these little keys that you're going to solve utilizing this card here. If you get it correct, you're gonna start with selecting the four keys in order, placing these little, they look kind of like little widgets or uh, little gears, and you're gonna connect the gear to the letter that is correct. So maybe it's, maybe, or that is the puzzle. So let's say you're doing puzzle C. You'll connect seven, if seven is the first key you need, with the, the gear from the C gear to the seven gear. And you'll do that for all the rest of them. Maybe, maybe it's seven, six, five, four, and you'll just connect seven to six, six to five, five to four. And from there, 
that will give you your answer. And on the bottom here is a bunch of numbers. Well, what are they? Uh, the card numbers. And so what you'll do is you'll look at the deck and say, oh, the answer is 16. And you'll flip over to the deck, you'll find 16, and you will read it. And that will continue the story from there. And that's all you're going to do. You'll finish that story portion. If there's any cards or tokens you need, you'll set those aside, and then you'll move aside to the next one. Sometimes there'll be puzzles that'll indicate that you need to punch certain things out, or read certain other cards, or put certain cards together that you found previously, in which case you'll do that as well. And whenever it tells you to push stuff aside, you'll push stuff aside up until the very end of the game. And at the end of the game, what's going to happen is you'll be greeted with how well you did. Now, this is not a timed game. This is not a game that values hints and answers. You can go ahead and go through all those as much as you want. What actually will make you decide whether you do well or not in this game is your infection and event deck. There are two decks here that are separate, the green and the red one. Whenever you fail a puzzle or a challenge, you'll be uh, removing one of these green cards from this deck and placing it on your status deck on top of your board here. And at the end of the game, we'll determine whether or not you got infected. And there's a number of infected cards in here. You're going to shuffle these, these this deck up at the beginning of the game to make sure you don't know which one you get or which ones you might get, depending on how poorly you do. You could totally avoid these cards if you're really smart with answering questions. And of course, you'll have these cards here. These are your event cards, which are also shuffled. They'll tell you to flip them over when you get to certain portions in the uh, ship here. And you're going to be accomplishing different types of tasks. And we'll go over a couple of like what the types of tasks are in my review. But the idea is if you fail to answer them correctly, you'll take an infection and you'll gain maybe an infection status. And we'll see at the end of the game. And based on not only whether you're infected and how well you did at answering these kind of like uh, logical deduction type questions, but also you'll get greeted with a certain choice or choices in this game that will also determine the ending. And at the end of the game, there's a multiple variety of endings that you're going to go ahead and read based on your infection status and what may or may not have happened to maybe the aliens on the ship or, or something along those types of lines. And the game is over. It's a one playthrough. You could play through again. There's not really a point though because all the puzzles and questions are all the same. Uh, but what you can do is put it all back together again and send it on to one of your friends and then they can enjoy the adventure of side quest nemesis. Okay, what do I think? Last week I did a video for Unfold, a dark story and victim of the pyramid. It's an escape room style game with puzzles that pops out and you'll basically like go through this type of little pamphlet here. They'll pop up, you have answer keys and they'll flip from one side to the next and uh, like kind of like a pop-up book. And there's gonna be little gadgets and gadgets you'll get in there up until the point where the storybook ends. You finish with this little pamphlet here and see how well you did based on time. Uh, Side Quest Nemesis is not like that. Side Quest Nemesis is mainly about completing the story, enjoying yourself and doing the best you can with the answers, utilizing hints. And of course, if you can't get it, there's also an answer key. But <laughs> uh, it, this game is all about your kind of logical deduction choices. So as you progress through, you're going to be uh, confronted with uh, certain events. And it might be like, oh, there's a fire in the ship and they'll show you a picture of what the fire looks like. And where do you put the fire out? And maybe it's just a simple answer like A, B, C, D. Or maybe it's more of like, a, oh, you need to put out the space that has uh, the bricks. Or maybe it's, oh, defeat the aliens. And it'll be like, oh, danger, there's intruders here. One of these aliens is an elite boss who controls all the other aliens. Figure out which one it is and neutralize them and then you can escape. And so there are all these little different things you'll have to kind of decide in this little event deck and how you get infected. That being said, the puzzles for this game are very similar to not the Dark Stories one, but to a Thames and Cosmos exit game. In fact, even the idea of the deck is very similar. You have your deck of cards and you go through them and they take you from one card to the next, kind of like a choose your own adventure storybook, if you played those back in the 90s, where it's like, go to page 34 because you chose to burn the witch. In this case, it'll be something like that. And when the deck is over, that is when the game is over, as opposed to the unfold, where it's basically, once you've unfolded the whole thing, the game is over in that way. Puzzles and challenges are different than a lot of the other games as well. This one here has a lot of punchies that uh, formulate different types of mm, events that you have to accomplish. Maybe you're trying to uh, store certain materials in a storage box and there's certain rules as to how you do that or a tangram puzzle. There is an engine puzzle which is quite, quite unique and you can watch the whole video if you want to just see what the side quest series is like. Maybe play a different one um, or just go into it. It's not super crazy or complex. You'll probably get it pretty simply, especially if you played an exit game, 
A lot of these puzzles are very similar to that. You're just not going to be ripping anything up. You can replay it. You can give it to somebody else to replay. And also, there's some cool unique aspects to the game, like the storage box will then become part of the game. You'll be inputting certain cards in here to change what the storage box looks like. You'll be going inside uh, this chamber here and dealing with the big boss at the end, and also avoiding their minions, which is utilized as well. You'll be taking off portions of the box that you can kind of see inside, like one of those all those old puzzles, those old things we did as kids with the shoebox and how you looked through inside this, the shoebox and like it kind of looked like this own little world. That's kind of how this thing works as well. And it's kind of cool actually. In fact, I kind of think a cool board game idea would be to like look through one of the boxes. I don't want to steal any, I, no, I'm not giving you guys any ideas, steal my ideas for a board game. But you know what I mean? Like that's a cool little aspect to the game and even the aspect of moving from room to room. So you're actually kind of maneuvering throughout the ship following the lines and you can go anywhere you want in any, in any different direction as long as it allows you to go based on the arrows, which can change a little bit as to how the story unfolds. But really at the end of the game, it all has the same kind of ending, allowing you to have different things that happen to you based on the choices that you made in the game. So yes, it's it's a Thames and Cosmos style exit game mixed with the Awakened Realms nemesis, uh, attached with some unique puzzles, interesting storyline aspects, and maneuvering around the board using a standee. So it's got kind of a little bit of that little bit of this, and it has its own kind of unique feel to it. Regardless though, if you like those games, even the Unfold series, you're going to like this one as well. It's another one of those style games. Puzzles, most of them are pretty simple, straightforward answers. If it thinks, if you think it makes sense, that's probably the answer. It gets more challenging as the game goes on. There's a few hiccups here and there that we had that we didn't really just understand. There maybe one or two puzzles that we had to kind of figure it out or use some hints, but you're not penalized, so that doesn't really matter all that much. The artwork for the game is excellent. Feels like Nemesis artwork, looks like Nemesis artwork, is solid artwork. And the quality of the game is nice as well. All the standees and punch boards feel nice. A few little wear and tear things as we pop them out, not a huge deal. It's one of those games where you only play once anyway, and you pass it along, and eventually down the line, it probably goes into the trash. That's usually how these type of games work, but that's fine because that's what you're paying for, is that singular experience and the ability to pass it on to somebody else. Overall, SideQuest Nemesis is a really cool little series of games. I'm excited to play the next one. This one here was a lot of fun, and I love the little aspects to the game that kind of made it its own thing. The infection deck, the event deck, moving around the game board, utilizing the box itself to kind of maneuver different unique little things, which I don't want to spoil everything for you. But yeah, it's a good experience, enjoyable experience. It's a fun little escape room style puzzle game. And I think if you like those things, this will be for you. So take a look down below in the description if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Side Quest Nemesis. If you like this video and you want to see more videos, go ahead and check out the latest videos. Oh, somewhere around here. Uh, along with, uh, of course, if you like, like subscribing. If you think we've earned it, if you watch more than one of our videos, I guess we have an escape room kick. That's what we've been getting in a lot. So we got a lot of different like little escape room style games, which I'm never sad about. Uh, you can go ahead and check out all kinds of stuff there. Um, and hopefully we've earned your subscription. Uh, if not, come back, watch another one. Maybe then we will earn your subscription at that point. Uh, we have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook and Twitter or X and Twitch, etc. It's all multi-stream, so you can go ahead and pick your platform. And of course, the website unfiltergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Okay guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to traversing uh, this, the, the world of Nemesis in SideQuest and a bunch of other different storylines with you <laughs> next time. Next time. Yeah, you, you, you get it.